Hey, Professor David Stuckler here. I've published over 400 peer-reviewed papers in high-impact journals across natural and social sciences. And I wanna share with you a little bit today about the things that I've learned. And if I could sit where you are and instead be my younger self, here's some things I wish I would have known that I could have done better. So the first thing is that peer review just isn't always fair. Uh, peer review is when journals independently send your papers to researchers and experts who you don't know, who then decide if your paper is worthy or not to be published. And they'll give you feedback, and often you'll have an opportunity to incorporate that feedback. Peer review is the least bad system we have for trying to guarantee a minimum quality of science. But there's a lot of luck and idiosyncrasy involved. And when I first got this negative feedback, it was devastating, it was crushing. And I've seen a lot of students I work with get so beaten down by it, they never get back up again, tried to publish and failed. Instead, what I wish I knew is just to get thick skin, keep going and reframe it as an opportunity to learn and to improve. There are some tips and tricks that you can use to nudge the editors, kind of reverse engineering the algorithm that they're going to use to find peer reviewers that can tip the odds in their favor. For more on that, check out some links below. The second thing is, it gets easier. The first paper I ever published was a nightmare. It went through five different journals, multiple rounds of peer review and revision only to get crushed by not just one set of reviewers, but another. And I really felt like throwing in the towel. But listen, it gets easier, not just going through peer review, but also publishing itself, taking the paper from conception to your winning idea through to the finish line. I would say the first systematic review I did took me about six months to complete just the process. Now I can do it in just a matter of a couple two, three weeks, because I know the process. I know the unpredictable aspects that could come, the, the landmines to avoid and not step onto, and I can better predict the timeline of what it's gonna take. So go a bit easier on yourself if you're just starting out. Everything's hard for the first time, especially research, otherwise everybody would do it. So it does get a whole lot easier. And after you do that first paper, by the time you've done hundreds, you can almost do it in your sleep. And I wish I would have known a system. Now I've developed a system, and if I had those shortcuts when I started out, I could have been so much faster. And the system you can learn from mentors, colleagues, esteemed people in the field. Uh, we have a lot of practical training and advice we can share that will help you accelerate. But that brings me to really a, a third point, that co-authors really help. Research can be a lonely, long slog, and when you have people to bounce ideas off of, get feedback and guidance, it can make a world of difference. The other thing too, when you're feeling fatigued or just worn out, passing your manuscript on to a co-author who can then pick up and inject some fresh life into it can really make a world of difference. So don't feel like you have to be an island just doing everything on your own. Really, use your co-authors, and especially mentors, wisely to not just produce more, keep things moving, but also to keep you motivated. The other thing I've learned is that as I reflect on my best and most cited papers, they're not always the ones that I thought were the best papers. It's very easy to slip into thinking, well, the more technically sophisticated paper, or the one that's a bit like a coat hanger with lots of ideas tucked in is the best one, but your best may not be what's the best from the point of view of peer reviewers and even the entire field. So I found in general, looking back, my top cited papers, the ones that got not just hundreds, but thousands of citations, were the ones that had a very clear, simple message. And often that simple message was right up front in the title and not on the abstract. So people could easily access that message, kind of cut through the world of noise and mass information and get straight to the idea, that brilliant idea that you have that you wanna to communicate to the world through your research. The other thing is you're only kind of treated as good as your last paper. So even though sometimes I publish 400 papers using lots of different methods, lots of different fields, top journals. Really, when you go out on jobs and you present yourself and you're getting invited to conferences, people tend to look a lot more recently at your productivity and what you've done. What that can mean is that even though you have long track record, the experience is fantastic, that for cashing in on grants, for going forward, you're almost, you can be trapped in the cycle of just continuously publishing, publishing, and publishing, looking for the next win. And when you publish your first paper, I remember the first paper I got published in the journal Lancet, it was like, wow, a bomb went off in my world. I mean, just this thrill, this electricity of, I, I can't believe I just accomplished that. Now it's more of a feeling like, I just need to get these papers out. Uh, a lot of the time too, I get more excited for the students and people I'm working with, because I remember what that felt like. And it's just awesome to see it and feel it again through 
through their eyes for the first time. I've definitely shifted in my career into more of a mentorship role, moving more from a first author to a senior author spot. And I feel like now I'm just kind of the agent for a lot of the students and talented researchers I work with, uh, really taking joy in their success. And in the same way, I feel like a lot of my impact then gets channeled through supporting those who go on to do good and great things. So listen, if you do want to develop and understand a simple system, we've got a great one that you can tap into. It's really valuable and you can find it in my Facebook group where we can all be directly in touch. And if you are interested in getting our best tips on publishing, probably want to check out this next video.